Hi guys. Well, I've I've ended up here at my house rather than up at the baseball diamond where I was going to go because I went out to go up there and it's absolutely a beautiful day. So it's really hot. And the thing about the condition I'm fighting, which is MS, is that if I get too hot, then it really affects me. So I just got into fear when I got out of the car and I thought, mm, it's a bit hot. So I was gonna just bail on this whole vlog thing, but um, I just thought I'd go ahead with it anyway. And I'll tell you the reason for that was because I watched this amazing um, power hour with Emma Stark the other day and she was just challenging all of us during this lockdown season to really press in deep to think about as Christians what our sphere of influence is and you might feel like there's nothing you can do but actually you have a sphere of influence even if it's with your family and the things you do and the values you hold and the example you lead affects the people in your sphere, sphere of influence. So I just got to really feeling energized by that message. And um, I thought to myself after as well, Lord, you know, what can I do? Because I often feel that I'm really restricted and that actually the weaknesses I have in my body are not very glorifying to him. So what can I bring to the table? And he just reminded me about four years ago how he challenged me to start doing vlogs which are video logs my kids told me that they're called video logs um, and so that night I had a dream and um, when I was having a dream I saw my little granddaughter Izzy who you know I always call my little prophetess um, speaking in the dream bring back your vlogs nanny so you know I thought I'd um, start this one off today and um, just want to say that, you know, it is an absolutely beautiful day. We're in a lockdown, but I'm very mindful of the fact that we live in an absolutely beautiful location. We've got lots of green around us, lots of open spaces. And I've been really enjoying going out in the fresh air, going up to Baseball Diamond. And, you know, you rarely see anybody. So... I've been able to have plenty of time sort of just enjoying creation, really meditating on the blessings that we have being here. So what I was going to talk to you about today was um, funny, something that I really got set free from this morning and yesterday, um, because there's this friend of mine that... Um, her name's Tess, that started what's called the bolt hole in the porter cabin up on the baseball diamond uh, that's really near here. And I remember when she started that, I thought it was the most amazing thing that she'd done. And I thought in effect, ah, oh, we're gonna get loads of people coming from the community and we're gonna be able to do lots of outreach. And we had so many ideas about reaching people who didn't know the love of Jesus, so didn't know God, didn't know anything about him. And we had uh, sort of visions of lots of people coming in. And, uh, you know, we were going to be like that light in the darkness shining out into this community. Um, but actually, that's not what happened at all. Uh, we've had like the odd one or two that have come from the community. But mostly what started happening is that lots of people started coming that were Christians and Christian women, and actually a lot of broken Christian women. And we realized that what was actually happening was that actually God wanted to minister to his bride, his church. And actually around about two years after we started it, Tess did give a talk at St. Nick's uh, church. There was a women's, uh, this is my story, this is my song thing going on. And she gave a testimony about how she heard from the Lord to start the bolt hole in the porter cabin, which is like a, a, a terrapin building, which is up on the baseball diamond. And she started talking about how he'd been ministering to broken people and 
and that there were, we were finding there were a lot of casualties coming in from the church. A lot of people who had been so wounded by the church that had felt overlooked, uh, forgotten about, not heard, and they'd almost died a spiritual death in their giftings, not able to express themselves or feeling that they were recognised. That was one of the big things. And a feeling of unworthiness and um, feeling like they didn't matter, that they didn't have a voice. So what we started doing in the bog hole was um, giving them a voice. And that was a really amazing thing. And do you know what? I From that, we had, you know, Tess is obviously very busy with her work. She's working in care on the front line. But from that, I had a definite call that we were to start meeting in the evening and actually almost become like a church. So we just went along one night to sit in the bolt hole and seek the Lord. We broke bread, me and Tess and Mandy, and um, we just heard him say so many things to our hearts about, about how happy he was with what we've been doing. And yeah, to just... Uh, you know extend our tent pegs so that's what we do that's what we did we started meeting and you know there was some conflict going on there um some sort of thing about um i don't know i'd always felt some kind of um thing about feeling some sort of jealousy that tess had had this vision and i hadn't had this vision and then when i heard the lord say extend your tent pegs and I started talking to Ambrose in um, Perth about extending. I felt there was that sort of dynamic there. But actually, what it is, is that what he does for the one of us, he, he does for every, you know, he's no respecter of persons. If he does it for one person, he'll do it for anyone. So what I have come to realise is that actually, Tess was a trailblazer. And actually, because he did that, he facilitated that great work through her she hearkened to his voice and she went and was obedient and she got the keys to the porter cabin and she actually uh, got great release from that by actually doing what he told her to do and he you know she brought the little she had and he added the increase so because she did that we were then able to go ahead and start the diamond which is a fellowship that we have now which has been going for two, nearly two years and you know it's been really hard when people have been there and very active with us when they suddenly have left and i felt this great grief like they'd abandoned us but actually you know it's almost like we're a stepping stone for them to go and step into their giftings because the whole thing about the diamond is that it's I used to think that we were giving people platforms for their giftings, but actually what it was about was that we were turning attendance of a fellowship into participation and then equipping to be able to go and do what the Lord had brought them to do. So I've just been really um, finding this so freeing and I really feel in this COVID-19 lockdown, as we're seeing more and more Zoom meetings, Skype meetings, that so that model of church, of a platform with one person leading from the front and people sitting in the church actually being spectators, that is, it feels like the Lord's shaking that up. And so I think, what I've been hearing the prophets saying is that there's a great shaking going on and it's as if the Lord is just breathing out this amazing uh, anointing on his bride that there is the new wineskins and just like we had the print printing press that actually facilitated Martin Luther's writings and the first reformation was heralded in it's as if social media is the printing press of the modern reformation. 
And I believe and feel in my spirit that we are on the cusp of the Second Reformation. And I think we are social media warriors. And this is the, the new wine. We are the new wineskins. And I feel no longer is social media going to be dominated by the enemy. But we, as social warrior medias, uh, social media warriors, will take back that which the enemy has stolen from us. And we are going to see miraculous powers being manifested. We are going to see uh, a, a mass turning towards God. I've heard that one in four people are typing in on Google at, at the moment, how do I pray? And the research has shown that something like 75% of those are the younger generation. Generation Z, which is 10 to 23, and the millennials, which are 24 to 40. And they are the ones that are asking, how do I pray? And what's coming up on the uh, internet search is very impressive. So you have a voice and just like I have a voice. And so I just want to encourage you, whatever your gifting is, whatever you feel the Lord's laid on your heart, to step out and share that because it's not you that's going to draw people. It's going to be the Jesus in you that compels people. That's what it's going to be. And so we hear in Isaiah uh, 61, it says, Arise and let your light shine and kings will come to your glory. Because we're in a level playing field. The celebrities and, the, and all those people who are normally so about self have been brought to naught. They're, they've got the same access as we have. They've got social media and they've got their webcams just like we have. So it's a level playing field. So, you know, in one day, the, the Lord brought all those things to naught. Just imagine if a virus can cause this much havoc how much more is the body of christ energized and anointed by the holy spirit going to change the nations for the lord jesus well i hope that speaks into your heart and i hope that something in there has just quickened you to think how might you affect your sphere of influence whether it's online doing uh video logs about your family life, edifying family, showing people what uh, a family in lockdown looks like when they're living their normal life, if it's about uh, activities that you can do with your children, is it about uh, exercise classes, uh, activities to make the most of this time, art, is it about Christian nutrition or healthy nutrition, how to uh, look after your immune system? Or is it about actually, if you believe that you've got the gift of art or, or um, sewing or make, doing flowers, starting a small business? Or, you know, are you prophetic? Can you s talk about what the Lord's speaking into your heart? Or, you know, the Lord, we see in the scripture that as the body of Christ, we have the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And I believe in miracles. I believe in miraculous powers. And I believe the church is going to step up into the fullness of everything God has for her with this new wine. And that the world is looking for answers that we have the answer to. Let your light shine over and out.